Hello, and thank you for being here. Uh, my presentation, my name is Panos Christeas, and I work for Meta. And my presentation is about the telemetry data sharing model, something which we will be uh, publishing, uh, you know, uh, until the end of the year as a spec uh, recommendation from our group. So this is a joint effort from all these people that have worked in our work group to, to make that happen. And let me start by uh, explaining what is tele what, what we mean about telemetry. Uh, this is an overloaded term. Uh, we all know that like it's about you know reading data out of the hardware and measuring uh, mainly hardware parameters out and it may look very simple to start with uh, but we believe that we have a fragmented space here that most uh, most operators are uh, depending on proprietary solutions to gather this telemetry and so on uh, a non-proprietary solution would be redfish of course uh, but st still uh, we run into the problem of how do you scale that out uh, when you have so many systems and like in the hyperscale scale of systems and then how do you collect it in a way that ideally it would be available to a third party not just the operator of the data center so uh, just a small disclaimer be before anything else uh, I may use the word redfish so our work is not in the redfish because we are not DMTF uh, we may have some ideas about uh, proposing some uh, additions to the Redfish standard or use uh, uh, like the open RMC model of cover operating and uh, adding OEM OCP extensions to the Redfish standard uh, and of course we would we would be very glad to submit and include this work as part of the standard in the future uh, before that, we would first want to run it through the industry and agree that this is the way we want it to, uh, to be. So last year, we uh, gave a presentation on this same topic, pretty much, and we were uh, describing what we do we need as an end goal from this telemetry data sharing um, initiative. So we want to be able to standardize the kind of information we collect the measurements we collect from devices and also uh, make them be available to, to vendors, to subject matter experts that may want to have a look at that data under all these conditions that we will be talking about. Uh, one of the big issues is how do you scale up the collection of data? Uh, how do you uh, how do you collect data not uh, from individual end nodes but from a large number of systems and the immediate uh, idea that comes to mind is to start aggregating data on some levels and that you cannot do it with a single aggregator for all your servers in all the data centers you will be need to build up several aggregators uh, in what I will be calling tiers so uh, we could have like from this, the single case of a single tier aggregation that covers all your machines or your, your 10 machines to having you know seven tiers of aggregators to cover many millions like uh, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of machines that we hope to uh, scale out to right uh, in the lowest tier is something that we have all known which is uh, a redfish standard aggregator that can take a few machines and gather together and, and represent their data, their properties, their configuration in a single layer, in a single Redfish tree. Uh, but then in the next years, we will need to, uh, to, to aggregate, to gather data from like, let's say tens of thousands of machines in you know, the next level up and then you know, consider numbers such as millions. So here is a graphical representation of our idea of aggregation tiers that like each S is a system, let's say that you have multiple systems inside a chassis or a rack, and then you have like a traditional aggregator like the standard solutions that we have today for your first, your last tier, your uh, bottom 
level tier. And then you gather data as it grows up to uh, a virtual first tier that could uh, provide you information from any server in your fleet. Right. Uh, I call that a, a virtual tier because practically the number, like you know, having all the data in one place may not pan out. So it will be something that uh, intelligently uh, will query its lower tiers to discover the, the host and bring it uh, on demand. So uh, there is challenges in that. So we need to have an efficient way to represent so many systems in one tree. In, in theory, in Redfish, this is, um, this is possible because you can have like a single identifier, a unique identifier for each system, but then if you have so many of them, you cannot just like scan them, you cannot browse through them, you would need to do an advanced query to, uh, to find the system you want, and hopefully, uh, Redfish does specify that you could use OData extensions, OData query language. It's not, like, to my knowledge, it's not very widely used yet in any uh, commercial or open products, but in our case, we would need to have it in place, in, at least in the, you know, uh, lower, uh, in the upper tiers, to be able to say, I want data from this number of devices, being that with a query. Uh, and also we need to be talking about a way to uh, arrange our tiers to build up this hierarchy of aggregators so that they can collect, reliably collect data from all the machines and retain it or be able to represent it up uh, the levels. Uh, which means we don't strictly talk about either a push or a pull model, but rather a hybrid model of push, pushing information from the lower, from the end nodes, which is the systems themselves, and also pulling information when you're performing a query up in uh, the first tiers and you want to find data from uh, the, in, uh, the individual lower layer, uh, layer aggregators. So it has to combine both of these technologies to be able to support uh, very large numbers. So, yeah, so the top tiers, we don't, we don't uh, expect them to persist data for everything, uh, especially telemetry data, which is volatile, which uh, changes over time. Uh, the top uh, tiers would fan out queries and the lower tiers would help with caching uh, things up and also providing this redundancy of uh, keeping the information in case the hosts are lost or becoming unreachable. Uh, the next uh, concept that we want to inter introduce is what we call component service, which is a new concept along the existing uh, services of Redfish. We will, we will put that as an extension, of course. Um, and the idea and what we have been asked to do from the industry uh, and from our needs is to represent components, not systems, on a Redfish tree. For example, like the devices, like uh, let's say hard drives or CPUs or memory DIMMs, we want to uh, place them in uh, a different structure so that we can uh, extract the telemetry or operate on them by device type and not by the system they are in, right? Uh, this doesn't mean that we break the, uh, the traditional tree or we change the way that the BMC works. Uh, this will still, like the BMCs, will still uh, operate the same way and provide Redfish the way uh, you have known it. But then at an aggregation level, we, we add that service we ca which can take the devices and list them in a different part of the tree by this device type. Right, uh, and this would be, uh, as said, an OCP uh, extension. Then we need to assign a unique identifier to the devices, which is independent of the system. And you know, uh, an obvious choice is to make it a vendor model, serial number, something that you can identify the device, even if the device um, can move across systems. 
even if it doesn't, but like, you know, you can address like the, the drive which is from Samsung and has this serial number like under this uh, manufacturer part number, and you know that you, you, you can find the information for, for that uh, particular device. So, and the way this works, uh, the way we propose that to work is that the aggregator will do that for us with a component aggregator um, service and will internally look up the correct, will, will with, uh, cache um, a link to the system path, the system address of that component so that it can uh, forward the, the, the query. So, you know, transfer the data, translate the data from the traditional Redfish location to this component-based location. So this now, having a component aggregator, allows us to implement the external sharing, like uh, listing the telemetry data, listing the properties of devices by just device type, by just vendor, or um, the criteria we will um, set. So, uh, uh, let's say you, you have one part of the tree that will contain all the uh, drives. You will have a part of the tree containing the CPUs or even the GPUs um, uh, or devices uh, by hardware technology. The same way they're currently uh, classified in Redfish uh, services. And then by having that, we will address the device by this unique identifier dimension rather than the location, which is the first thing we don't want to share as database uh, operators. We don't want to share uh, the topology of our fleet, the topology of the, our data centers and the you know, names of systems and things like that. So by uh, arranging the devices on a strictly um, technology and serial number format, uh, if we uh, uh, wish to export that data to, uh, let's say, the vendor, we are only giving them the vendor serial numbers that they created in the first place, right? Or we can even uh, implement anonymization to map these serials or these component identifiers to something that cannot be reversed back into our physical topology or um, uh, operational parameters of our disease, right? Um, same, like, this, this is maybe very trivial to implement even as an OData filter, like write the OData filter, implement, have a, uh, a service that is capable of uh, uh, implementing that query language and just do the translation for us and uh, put uh, the uh, devices in that component tree. And as you see in the picture, we have this like owner entity that uh, left, left from that is us, the data center owners that have access to all the data. And uh, right from that is the vendors that may only have like limited view of that data. And in the middle, uh, I put that Q filter, well, like, as in Q data filter, which is the rules we will put in that engine to limit the access of each vendor to that data. So, uh, how do you how do you set these rules? Uh, we need another uh, kind of service. We will call it privilege panel here, which is. Um, a, another OS, OEM OCP extension to uh, the Redfish tree. And this one will contain the rules, bundles of settings that would apply to its entity. So we, we don't want to go by user account because you know an external vendor could may have multiple accounts into our, our system. So they will have access to that, but we translate the user account to uh, the privilege panel entry that uh, translates that into query parameters, filters, uh, restrictions of what not we want to apply on what data we are sharing. So uh, this is something that we control from the inside as operators. The, it may not be visi even visible to the vendor that has access to the data, 
uh, we may only allow them to know that you know you're only looking at your own drives or you're only looking at this kind of uh, manufacturing load of your own drives because that's our sharing agreement, right? Uh, of course, we could allow the system to to perform additional queries on top of that and allow them to specify a subset of the, what they are allow, allowed to see in the first place. So they may be interested on only you know, having uh, all, let's say, Samsung um, drives, but only want to look a particular, a particular uh, model and uh, production lot because they're looking at specific uh, error pattern in that one, right? So having that, then telemetry, as we said in the beginning, may be very trivial to implement. There is already a white paper, a part of the Redfish standard, which talks about implementing telemetry, as in collecting the measurements over time and building these telemetry reports, which are pages of data that you can serve uh, later to, to uh, the upper tiers, to the consumers of your Redfish uh, service. Right. Uh, in our case, we can start from that as a baseline, but on top of that, the first thing we want to change is to use the component service URIs. So we're not addressing, we're not listing uh, systems by their system location, like not, not that CPU in that system, in that rack, and so on, but rather, you know, uh, this CPU by serial number generally in our cloud of fleet. Uh, and these URIs immediately give us what we want because we can aggregate several similar devices across systems in one telemetry report. Um, then this thing does not even need to be implemented in any part of the BMCs. We still have the same BMCs or non-BMCs or IMAs um, or not Redfish BMCs that collect the first uh, layer of data, but we, d we then have an, uh, an implementation, an internal representation in some aggregation tier which is uh, semantically compliant or semantically compatible, I would say, with Redfish. And in that node, the aggregation la layer, we can do this telemetric collection and retention, right? Uh, then we can add even more detailed rules about what a vendor can ask as a telemetry report or from already materialized uh, reports, what the vendor can see out of that report, like, you know, uh, even trim down uh, the information further. Uh, one thing we have immediately uh, realized is that the existing telemetry proposition uh, in that uh, Redfish white paper may not be enough if we scale that to uh, our sizes uh, because it only has some very trivial statistical functions, some trivial aggregators. We may need to pivot data to different uh, dimensions, to different accesses in the statistical way. Uh, we may need to apply some uh, more sophisticated queries on what this report will collect and, and all that. So uh, I think we will start a journey of um, iterating and getting uh, more functionality into this telemetry concept uh, that uh, started off Redfish. So having all that, I believe we have implementing, uh, implemented the data sharing part that we, were, uh, uh, we, we promise. So the data sharing is about having telemetry reports, telemetry data available in such a format and um, filtered, audited um, composition that we are comfortable sharing with the outside world. And the outside world may be the vendors, the manufacturers of that specific equipment, or even the academia that wants to uh, uh, implement uh, or uh, experiment with some uh, new analysis on our data that we would not have shared otherwise. Uh, something I, I realized I did not mention in the first layer, which was a question before, is 
how does IMA play into that? And the answer is like, uh, once we are building this um, sophisticated or you know, non-trivial, let's say, uh, hierarchy of aggregators, getting things from heterogeneous sources as the IMA and the BMC and, and things like that uh, immediately becomes uh, easy, I would say. So we have aggregators that have some logic in them and can take data from both sources, combine it, represent it as it should on uh, in a single uh, red fish uh, semantic tree. Okay. So um, my next call is to join us to read our uh, wiki page in the Open Compute Workgroup um, uh, project. Uh, we do need like, so th we have this proposal, we have a um, uh, poster outside, but we still need to run it through other members of the industry to finalize, to find, you know, possible flaws that we may, or omissions we ha may have there and uh, get it ready so that the industry can accept it because that's, that's the primary goal to deliver something that the, the, the industry uh, all of OCP can work with. Uh, of course, once we have um, an initial agreement, once we have um, uh, something that we have all, um, we all feel comfortable working with, uh, we would be glad to uh, submit it to DMTF and turn our OCP OEM extension into part of the standard, hopefully. Uh, also, our intention is within 2023 to have a reference implementation of uh, proof of concept uh, uh, layer of aggregators and component service that we can showcase and uh, allow you to see that, uh, that con uh, concept, that, that, that design in practice. So uh, thank you very much and I could take some questions now. question about uh, using the component service URI. So, um, so in fault management, uh, mm -hmm. joins are the root of all evil. And what yeah. I mean is that when I'm trying to look at, you know, a million systems and we're trying to figure out what's broken on a system, having to join data from a CPU to join with memory to an OS is problematic because the things that transpire when something goes wrong happen in nanoseconds. And so there's not really a timestamp we can use to coordinate things. So our solution has been to try to aggregate everything into a hermetic bundle that we can then feed to an analysis tool. And so I was curious, uh, like, can we have, is it possible with, yeah, if you go to the previous slide. Yep, uh, sorry. I think our, uh, you, you, you mentioned, you know, getting a CPU data, and I understand that, that you know, when we send data to a vendor, we want to limit perhaps yeah. the data accordingly. But how do we handle the case where it's, we've got a crash and it's a really difficult one to debug and I need the, the power information, I need the CPU information, I need what memory, you know, the, the, the memory reliability information to try yeah. to get a complete picture of what went wrong. Yes, I, I, I have another picture which uh, I shared in the um, poster. So uh, the idea goes back to this one. So uh, having the component service does not exclude having a holistic view of the systems at the system level in the traditional um, in the traditional red fish way. So these red blocks are red fish semantic, semantically aggregators. So I was describing before having a tier one aggregator that can get any information from any system in the system level. So if you want to uh, correlate information from different components on one system, why it crashed and so on, you would find it there. If you want to do telemetry uh, and have uh, these aggregators perform telemetry material materialization and collection on the system level, you can still do that. But we can still like this and the component service could tell you that the CPU is broken and then contain like, you, you also have an inside view that 
also refers to the links of the system path. So you can use this link to jump from the component service to a system view and examine the other parts of that system. Okay. As, assuming you're doing the collection, of yeah, course. I right? think what we may want to yeah. do is have a fault log view. Yeah. That the, the fault log is self-contained because when you say CPU failed, uh, the system doesn't know what's wrong with the CPU. The system knows it has some error logs. And so, but, but we want to correlate those. And I'm, I'm a little worried about correlating them above the system. So would it be possible to say we're going to feed a fault log and we'll aggregate fault logs at the red blocks? Yes. Okay. So, so th yeah, th th this, this is the intention. But if you want, if you want then to skim these logs and feed them to the vendor after you have correlated and realize that this is a CPU or a dim fault, for example, uh, you will need to perform that translation from uh, this uh, red block to the yellow block and then only have the vendor specific view of your fault log. Right, right. And in, yeah. in the fault management team, we've got mm. an idea for how to analyze the logs coming from the vendors. So mm. I think we could do that. So, so yeah. I think that would work. So thank you. Okay. Okay. Appreciate You're welcome. Um, hey, so who defines the vendor specific view? Would each vendor provide you with some sort of a schema or is this like information passing opaquely through like a as a bunch of OEM fields that we just aggregate at the IMA or the BMC and then just shuffle through the system till it ends up in the middle? Like how do, you know, like, cause you know, different devices have different uh, things that would, would count for troubleshooting and telemetry. So this is, this is a classical, um, question for the implementation of Redfish, like, like how much information would you put in your Redfish tree per component, right? So uh, we do not want to go into these details and try to specify what each drive should report or what each DIM should report as metrics. And I think this is more like a question for the, the industry to to answer for us. But the idea is that what, once you have normalized all that information into in st standards, formats, or extensions of like Redfish, uh, then you can apply this filtering and you can apply a common engine to, um, uh, to specify which of the fields that are uh, available you can uh, start measuring. Uh, the telemetry white paper of Redfish itself defines these um, metric report definitions where you set all these parameters in the existing standard. Okay. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much then.